Alright everyone out there in Banjo Land, Mike Henning here. I had a request to do a real basic beginner lesson on the basic kind of two to four slide on the third string. So it's a move you're going to see in a ton of songs, whether you've played Cripple Creek, Boil Them Cabbage Down, a ton of beginner songs use this. You can't get too much practice on a two to four slide on the third string. And I see a lot of students and beginners struggle with this in one, reading the tab and kind of understanding the underlying concepts behind why we're doing this slide. So I'm going to talk all about that in this lesson. I'm going to break down how to do it and then show you some tips kind of on how to achieve a better sound. This is one of those things you're going to keep practicing throughout your banjo, you know, study. So if you don't get it right away, don't worry about it. Keep practicing it. You're going to see this in a lot of songs. So you're going to get plenty of practice on it. If you like what you're hearing, you can subscribe at the end and you'll get a free tab sent to you with a bunch of practice tips. All right, here it is. All right, so let's talk about one of the most basic moves on the bluegrass banjo. It's a slide on the third string while adding a right hand roll. And getting this, this technique down is critical to understanding bluegrass banjo. I see students all the time that come in that, that don't quite understand how to play this or read it off a tab. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to break it down each hand at a time, and then I'll show you how to put it together and then show you how to where to use it. Okay, so let's start with just the left hand. And let's put our second finger, so our middle finger of our left hand, on the second fret of the third string. And we're going we're gonna to play that note with our thumb of our right hand, and we're gonna slide up to four. So that's the first thing, is just getting that slide down. And keep the pressure of your left hand down while you play that. And my advice is let the first note ring out a little bit, especially when you're, you're first starting. It's very easy to get excited and just wanna, wanna slide right away. You have to let the first note ring out a little bit. That's your reference point, so if you don't hear enough of that first note, you kind of lose the slide. And I'm using my second finger because it's the longest. It's going to help me not mute these other strings below and above it. So let's practice that a few times. And I'm going up to four. And don't worry if you get exactly up there. Do that as many times as you need to. And remember, I'm not playing that note again once I get up there. It's not... You play that note once and you let the slide change the pitch. That's really important is even look down at your right hand if you have to. I'm only playing that note once. I'm changing the pitch with the slide. That's really important. Okay, a couple more times. And I'm sliding right up to the fret, getting as close to the fret as I can without being right on top of it. And again, like I said, don't worry about that, your accuracy too much right off the bat. That'll improve with time. So. Just practice getting a good sound, especially on that first note. Okay, so let's let's start adding our right hand. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're playing that thumb on the third string, and then we're gonna hit the index finger on the second string. And the tricky part about this is it's the same note as the note that you're sliding up to. So don't let your ear get confused. You wanna play that open second string as the second note. I'm not playing that fourth fret on the third string. It's, it's the same pitch, so don't let your ear get thrown off there. I'm playing thumb index with my right hand. Hear that? So that's critical to understanding this concept is I'm sliding up to that note, and then I'm actually playing that same note on a different string with a different finger of my right hand. So that's really important to understand that. I, I'm finding that pitch on a lower, so a lower sounding string, I'm finding that same note as it's, it's the open second string, and I'm sliding into that with my, my uh, left hand, and then I'm playing that open second string with my index finger. So that's gonna allow me to use more than one finger and, and play faster, whereas if I, I slid up and then play that again with my thumb, you know, you, you'd really be limited in your speed because how fast can you move your thumb just back and forth? Whereas if I use two different fingers, I'm eventually gonna be able to play that a lot faster because I'm using I'm using more of my, my right hand fingers, which is gonna allow me to, to have to move each finger, you know, not as fast. So I can, I'm using more fingers so I can uh, move each individual finger slower and still play faster. So that's really important. So a couple more times. 
So do that as many times as you need to. And the goal is to get right up there, right as I'm picking that index finger. But if you don't do it, if you don't get the timing right, right off the bat, that's okay. So just keep practicing it. Okay, now I'm going to hit two more notes. Then I'm going to hit my open fifth string with my thumb. And then I'm going to hit the open first string. So the whole thing sounds like this. So you can loop it as many times as you want. My second finger is pretty much staying down the whole time. I'm not lifting it up. R resist the urge to go like this. And, you know, kind of fly off the strings. Notice how I'm keeping that down. I'm basically sliding back and forth on a track. You know, I'm not really lifting it up. And again, make sure you're not playing that second note, that thumb, twice when you get up there. It's not that. Hear the difference there? I'm not using my, I'm not taking advantage of my three fingers there when I do it that way. It sounds exactly the same, but I'm playing my thumb twice in a row, which is going to make it a lot harder for me to play that faster. So I need to use my index finger on the open second string. That's probably the single biggest thing I see with beginners when they're playing this lick wrong is they're playing the right pitches, but they're not using the correct fingers and they're not using the open strings to help make the lick easier. So you really have to watch your right hand there and don't trust your ear in this case. Watch your right hand because a lot of times, again, if I play that thumb twice, it's the pitches are correct, but I'm not playing the roll right. So that slide is meant to imply that second string. So that's one of the most common banjo techniques out there. And it actually is derived from fiddle playing, I think, originally, where they do that all the time on fiddle, where they'll go to a lower string and slide into that note and then drone with a string above it. It's very, very common on a fiddle or mandolin. And we're basically using that same technique on the banjo. Once you get that down, let's try some different right hand rolls. Let's try like the forward verse roll. So same concept there. I'm sliding up and then I'm playing that open second string. Or the forward roll. You can keep it up there too once you slide up. You can use any right hand roll once you get it down, as long as you're doing that, that first thumb and index. Okay, so a couple more real quick tips. So with slides, you don't actually have to get all the way up to the note. It doesn't actually have to reach the same pitch. Um, all you really have to do is start the slide and the listener's brain will actually fill in the rest of it for you. It's a little trick. So a lot of times, that's where you'll see you'll only slide to two to three. That's a very common banjo thing is sliding. You don't actually have to get all the way up to the four, but watch if I just slide to three. You just want to hear the start of that slide, and, and the listener's brain will fill in the rest of it. That's why I was saying you don't have to be too worried about the accuracy right off the bat. Worry about your right hand and keeping it solid there. If you only get up to three, it's not the end of the world. More importantly is, is giving that first note plenty of value. And I'm kind of exaggerating it. Obviously, I'm hitting it harder than I normally would just to show you that I'm kind of exaggerating that note. Okay? So a couple other little things let's do real quick. Let's now incorporate that into a, a basic chord progression. So that's a lick over a G chord. So our open G. So let's add our three basic chords in G. We got G. We got C. And let's use D7, so a basic D7. And so I've got my C is, is second fret on the lowest string, fourth string, open third string, first finger on the first fret of the second string, and third finger on the second fret of the first string. And then for my D7, I've got my first finger on the first fret of the second string, and my second finger on the second fret of the third string. And then my other strings are open. That's my D7, open is G, and then that's C. Okay, so let's do that slide for our G chord, 
and then we'll do that same roll, the alternating thumb roll, on each of the other chords. And that's why I'm using my second finger here, because it'll make it easier to go into those other chords. Okay, here we go. Let's go really slow. So that's a basic chord progression. So you can really use that slide for any of the open G kind of licks parts. You can also use that in backup. It works really good. So you could do like a pinch. And then do that slide. That's a very common just fill lick. You should get used to and comfortable just throwing that in there. All right. So that's a basic slide. Um, Again, remember, we're using that to, to, it's really just a way to emphasize that second string. We're going to a lower string, finding that same pitch, and then sliding into it. Use your, use multiple fingers of your right hand. That's what's going to give it that bluegrass banjo sound. You're not playing that same note on the same string like you would on a guitar, you know, where on the guitar you might go something like that, where again, I'm using all the notes on the same string, where on a banjo, more playing across the strings or down the strings, I guess, however you want to think about it. And that's going to allow me to use three fingers. I always want to take advantage of the fact that I have three fingers. Like I said, that's going to allow me to move each finger less. You know, if I use my fingers more efficiently, I'm going to be able to play faster with less effort. So remember, look down at your right hand if you need to and make sure you're using different fingers, especially on that first part. Don't let your ear get tricked. Again, it's the same pitch. So don't play that on the third string. You gotta play it on the second string. Alright, hope that helps you out. Good luck.